Mura. Mura. Mura, 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 Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Sid Rab, and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Smell Review. Where I review as many animes as I can in the year of 2021. It is the almost the 16th of December because I am recording this at 11:24 p.m. late at night gang I don't know why but I just record these late at night because uh, that's just when I get these scripts done or whatever but um, I got semester finals coming up this is gonna be fun <laughs> alrighty Jojo's Bizarre Adventures dude I'm stunned that I actually really really enjoy this show um, I I never thought, like, I finished part one of uh, Phantom Blood. There's 25 episodes in the anime, um, and I just watched the first 10, which that comprises of part one. Um, and wow. I mean, it has its flaws, but that was, it is really good. Like, I actually felt really kind of invested into the story a little bit. Uh, and uh, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just surprised that I would actually enjoy this show and actually was able to um, get into it because I had so many friends that would just uh, recommend me it, and I was like, okay, I'll get to it, uh, and I just eventually never did. So, uh, yeah, I think it's safe saying going forward, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna finish this anime. Um, so I'm, what what you notice is that I, I'm splitting this video. Uh, in two parts and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna explain that uh, at the end of the video um, but for right now I want to give you my thoughts and opinions on the first half of Jojo's Bizarre Adventures so to my knowledge the first six episodes are um, universally hated um, I'm gonna go ahead and say this right now uh, spoiler warnings before we get into anything if you don't want to get spoiled um, I would recommend you just timestamp it and then come back so um i actually really enjoyed the um first six episodes like i actually got i think hooked like the second or third episode like it actually seemed pretty i think even, even the first episode was pretty interesting to me um so i don't see where people are saying that um may maybe it's because you know like I i'm still early in the series so i don't know uh what to expect because all i know going forward uh, all I knew going in the JoJo is that um, it's wacky and there's stands. So that's all I knew. Um, but I really enjoyed this story. And I wrote down, uh, it was the craziness. Uh, uh, what I, I wrote down, all I knew about JoJo was the craziness and stands. That's it. And just to have a cool story of chivalry, being a man, vampires, and they carry someone's will. I don't know, man. Like, I don't know. I really enjoyed that. It wasn't just something I was expecting um, from, you know, a show like this. Alrighty, so keeping in twine with JoJo being so bizarre and hectic, my script here is all hectic, so I'm going to be all over the place. So um, let me read off here. So in part one, uh, we learn the intertwined destiny of Jonathan Joestar and Dio. So we learn early on that I hit my mic. So we learn early on that Dio has a god awful father. Like um, he's drunk. He's an abuse. He's an abusive parent. Um, he's he's called. Uh, he calls women uh, whores and whatnot. It. He's a very. It very depicts him as like a very despicable person. Like just someone you you you're supposed to hate. I guess essentially. So. Um, early on, we learn about, uh, that's, we didn't know at the time, but that was Dio's father, um, and we just learned that his background is, is straight up hell, like, it, it, um, just living under that, um, and so then we also learn about Jojo, uh, Jonathan Joestar, who, um, was born into the high class, and, um, Despite him uh, being childish at times, he tries to be. He tries to have chivalry and like um, proper etiquette, uh, manly etiquette. You know what? If you know what I mean, I can't really explain it. But he tries to live up to his status, but he doesn't really think much of it. So, um, there was at the beginning. So let's let's, let's rewind. So at the beginning of the story. 
um, there was this very fatal car crash. Um, it included uh, Jojo's mother and his father, George, Joe Star. Um, and so then Dio's parents uh, com- ended up coming and saving him, actually. Um, I completely forgot Dio's f- dad's name, I swear. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and just put up the name uh, r- right here. I, I'm so stupid that I forgot him. Uh, but him and his wife uh, ended up saying, j- saving George. Uh, tragically, uh, JoJo's... Uh, okay, so jo- first JoJo. Um, his mother passes away, um, and he's being... And, and George's like um, last attempt at like, a cry for help asks them to, to save him and his uh, son. Uh, so we then cut to a little bit in the future, and we see that the, the family's now fine. Just jo- JoJo doesn't have a mother. Um, so eventually, uh, Dio's dad dies from an illness, um, and (sighs) despite wanting to get medicine, all he wants is, like, beer. (laughs) If you, he literally said, if you have enough money to get me medicine, then get me some alcohol. (sighs) Dio's dad. You understand, you understand a little bit about why Dio does what he does, but he's still a, we'll, we'll get to that, we'll get to that. So anyway... Dio's, um, Dio ends up, uh, father ends up dying, and he hands Dio his, um, his, like, uh, his will, I guess you could say. Um, so basically, George owes him for saving his life, and so Dio then gets adopted into the Joestar family, and is perceptually just part of the family now, but he is very, he, he has evil intent, because jo- Jojo had everything from the start, and Dio had to suffer from everything. So Dio wants to take over the Joestar family because, um, well, he just wants he wants that wealth. He wants, he, you know, he wants that bread. So we, we see um, multiple accounts of Dio just being an absolute jerk. Like, he kicked, um, he kicked jo- uh, Jojo's dog. Um, and even, he stole, he stole Jojo's first kiss from his first love, okay? This man, he burned, he burned the dog alive, because they got into a confrontation about Dio stealing that first kiss. Bro, this dude is sinister as heck. I'm trying not to swear because of YouTube, screw you, um, even out of nowhere, he even tried, um, poisoning JoJo's father, I'm assuming the same way he tried to do with his dad, like, bro, the, 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 the intent in this guy is beyond a no, whole, whole nother level, um, but then, uh, there was like a, f- a switch that flipped, so Dio, um, there's this magical, uh, power that's been hinted so far, of the stone mask and we've seen every now and then when blood gets on that mask um spikes attract from the sides and presumably uh if you were to put that mask on and put blood on it it would like pierce your your head we learn that through that mask you basically get the powers of being a vampire i kid you not so Dio finds out about this because Jojo has been doing some research into it. And basically, he uses it on himself. Kills, literally, kills Jojo's father. Uses his blood to give him the power. And it's just an epic scene inside of the burning Joestar mansion. Where Dio is um, a vampire now. And Jojo is just... in um enthusiastic like he's um he's taking all the strength that his father had and he's trying to defeat Dio once and for all because he doesn't want that evilness to spread um but then we soon learn you know Dio's a, a very can uh can evil guy he can get out of situations um so he ends up living unfortunately um and then that's where we learn the um beginnings of this part one's power system through a man called Zephile, who will I say, dude, Zephile is the homie, okay? Like he is genuinely my favorite character. 
Anyway, so um, before I go any further, I do want to talk about uh, some things I've noticed with um, JoJo. So I noticed that Totally Not Mark, um, he's a really amazing YouTube creator. Uh, link in the description. Please be sure to go check him out. Um, he made a similar video on part one of uh, the Phantom Blood, and I actually say that I want to agree with a lot of um, with a lot of the points he had about some of the flaws. Um, with the story and how it's told, but also some of the highlights. Um, I think one big thing, uh, for me, before we, like, before we get into the power system, I want to explain. I think one big thing, um, that this story had for me, uh, it was the pacing. Um, I didn't mind it, but I felt like at times it could be going a, a little bit too quick. Um, because every now and then, like, uh... It just felt like you, you know, you couldn't really um, emotionally attach a little bit. See, like with One Piece, you have now a thousand chapters. Actually, chapter 1001 at the time of recording this should be out. Anyway, over a thousand chapters, you get to just build a bond with the Straw Hats. And just i don't know building a bond to these characters you do feel sad for them like when deaths happen when deaths happen my list and um tragic moments happen like you feel the weight of it you just don't have that emotional reaction i guess you could say that they would have um if it you know like it's, it's hard to explain but i think you get what i'm trying to say it doesn't ha it doesn't get you fully emotionally attached but it does make you sympathize for um these characters and i'm gonna be honest i i i'm okay with that um i understand uh it, you know stories they're going to be told different um and i i didn't mind it i actually you know i, I think it was kind of a little bit of a benefit it gave it the show because it uh, if anything this show is an action show um, it's literally all about fighting and the power system and just triumphing. So I understand it. Like if it's going to do emotional scenes, it doesn't want it to be so like stretched out and long. It kind of just, uh, wants to be very simple and to the point. If it's going to do something like that, I understand. Like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hate on anyway. Since I went off topic, let's talk about the power system. So, it goes by two different names. Um, when I was watching the anime, it's called Ripple. But I heard in the manga, it's called Hammond. Um, I don't really care which one. I'm going to call it Ripple because that's how I know it. Um, Ripple is awesome. Okay. I did... Sh okay, like I said, I do share some of my uh, thoughts with Mark. And the freaking leaf hand glider... I think that it's completely stupid. I, at the time when I watched it, I was just like, oh, okay. But looking back, I just realized how dumb it is. Freaking, the, le the static electricity in your body, you could use Ripple to amplify it and basically connect all the freaking leaves together. No, no, no. I, I like Ripple. I think it's a really um, cool like concept. It's like a breathing technique, basically, and allows you to channel its energy. And it was created um, for healing, but also to actually counteract um, users of this stone mess. Um, so it's actually kind of unique in that way. So while we still don't know about stands yet, um, I think going into part two, we might learn hopefully a little bit. No spoilers. But instead of stands, I think I really enjoyed Ripple and, and the concept um, that it that it comes with. I think uh, it it didn't really take me out of it when there was those um, doll moments. But I think it really uh, really entranced me. Like I think uh, hopefully going forward, I get to see more of this Ripple technique um, or something of the sorts. I mean, if we're gonna t if we're gonna talk about Ripple, um, the freaking fight with Jonathan and. The two knights whose names I'm going to put up because I have short-term memory loss. I swear to God. Um, that was amazing. Like, the amount of chivalry it had there. See, with Ripple, right? Since Dio... Um, so Dio turned these two um, infamous um, knights that were dead. He turned them undead. So Ripple 
the way you attack them, you are able to, like, purify them so they go back to the uh, human form, but th they're still dead. Um, but once since they were undead, uh, they're, they're still alive technically, and then they can feel pain once they get purified. Um, so Jojo was able to purify one of the knights, and it was just an amazing scene, passing down, like, I guess passing down the torch, taking... Um, having that sword and etching a new name for it for a new generation i think that was so cool and then the fight underwater as well with him uh just it's not something i you you never think of right like when sanji fought that fish man on on arlon park in the water his first instinct of course was to go to the surface and he fought and the fish man fought against it um, but Jojo, in this instance, he instead swam straight down, and, um, he knew the geography of the land, so he knew that this was around, like, a volcanic structure, so there was going to be gaps of air, and he ended up using that gap of air to then use Ripple and propel him out of the water. It was incredible, um, that's something I'm going to pray, I'm going to be praising for this series going forward, um, the, these fight scenes are amazing. Like, I, I, can't, I can't get enough of them, and I hope I can get more of it. And then we also got um, the other knight, the big the big brute guy. Uh, again, I'm very sorry. I'm, I'm forgetting names. Uh, I'll, be sure to, I'll be sure to work on that going forward. Um, I think it was very interesting. Uh, it was just interesting, because with him, we got to see, uh, I guess, Ripple being used to like its absolute limits and um sadly um within this fight we did um see the death of zephyle um and in his final moments he ended up giving all of his life power and ripple to jojo and it was a stereotypical i guess shonen power up um but it was a little it was a little impactful like i actually felt really sad seeing zephyle die because um a little bit prior, he, he told his backstory, and he was told that um, if he pursues the path of learning Ripple, he was he's gonna he's gonna end a, a tragic death, and he ended up accepting his fate because he knew that this was gonna be that tragic death. Um, and yeah, no, it was just it, it really it really it really hurt when Zephyr died a little bit. It hurt in my heart, but it also hurt Jojo. And it helped it up giving him another reason to fight Dio himself and stop him from, you know, killing the people he cares about. Oh, and then there's so many characters we haven't even talked about, like, like, Erina, okay? Jo that was Jojo's first love. That was the one Dio stole, okay? She doesn't get, like, any screen time. But yet, the, the scenes that they have are so freaking wholesome. Like, I mean, you see, I'm single myself, and I mean, I don't mean the brag, but if anyone wants to recreate what they had, okay, tweet me at Twitter, or hit my DMs on Instagram, uh, or whatever, Con or, uh, comment down below, I don't even care, I'm just, I'm just joking, I'm joking, um, <laughs> sadly though, I wish I was. Anyway, the amount of little screen time she got, um, Still, she had a very big impact uh, on us when, uh, spoiler, Jonathan died at the end, um, finally killing off Dio. Um, but since that's not where the story ends, we'll go ahead and explain that in a bit. Um, and then there's also Speed... Speedwagon! Speedwagon! Speedwagon. Best character, dude. Like, don't even get me started with Speedwagon. I actually... He's underrated in my opinion, okay? I think people don't give Speedwagon the credit that he um, deserves. Um, he was just like a punk JoJo beat up in like a back alleyway and he ended up admiring him because of like his um, manliness. Oh my goodness. I swear every time I record this dude, it was, it, I'm not drinking, I'm not drinking that flavored water. I'm drinking a freaking Pepsi Zero and I'm still having this dude. I think it's what happens when you freaking record at 11.45 at night. So like I said, um, at the end of Phantom Blood, we see the very um, tragic and kind of sad death of Jonathan Joestar. Um, he sacrifices himself to save uh, his wife and his unborn daughter at the time. Um, and it's, it's really heartwarming. Um, it's, 
it, it's also very sad um, to just see Elena floating out in sea um, with this baby she saved, um, just not knowing what the future holds. She never got to spend quality time with her husband in America like they planned. Um, so yeah, it was pretty sad. So now, now that we go 10 episodes in, we have a time skip. So, the first part of the show was like in the 1980s. And so now we're cutting to like the 1930s. This is like, uh, oh shoot, I think this is during the stock market crash right now. Yeah, the stock market, cra uh, during the stock market crash right now. So, we've gone by two generations already. So, we are then introduced to Joseph Joestar. Um, and the way we're introduced is that um, we see this kid, uh, this nice, very beautiful black individual. Um, he ends up stealing Joseph's uh, wallet uh, and gets caught and gets caught by some cops. They're extremely brutal because this is the 1930s, of course, racism and probably corruptness because of um, the economic downfall that was ensuing at the time. And so um, we see jo we see Joseph actually um, mimic a lot of behaviors that um, George actually exhibited when um, he was in the first part. And I think that's a really interesting like attention to detail. Um, but very early on, he he uh, gets into a conflict with these cops, and we see him using Ripple effortlessly. Um, I think it explains that um, it was just passed down by the generations, and so he just. Um, nat he just by nat uh, naturally can use Ripple um, with ease. He's always been able to do it since he was a kid. So um, I think that was a really interesting uh, little thing. But anyway, he takes out the, the crooked racist cops, uh, saves the kid. Um, we also learn during this a brief skirmish, he has a very bad temper. Like he can get, he gets mad very easy. Um, and he doesn't have a problem like um beefing it out with someone just because he uh, they said one little uh side remark so that's kind of the character he is so he ends up saving this kid and we find out that his name is Smokey um kind of this new generation's um little uh kid that's tagging along uh, I didn't get to explain that in the first part but um there's like a, a whole cast of characters and I think it's going to be repeating every um every part so, uh, Smokey, we saw he was a thief, um, but he soon just gets adopted under the Joseph family and uh, just um, just kind of be there for Elena, um, and it's really nice. So, we also learned during this time that Speedwagon, uh, he's found more of these stone masks, uh, and we actually see a sculpture of what I'm presuming was Dio at the time, um, just in the center, like in a very like angelic pose, like he's an angel being depicted. Um, so he created like this like five man team, five six man team, and he wanted to destroy these stone masks. Um, and one of his as allies named um, Stasio, um, I didn't get to mention this, but when JoJo ended up defeating Dio in this very huge battle. Uh, at the end of, near the end of uh, part one, um, he had this uh, team that all knew um, Zephyl, and uh, one of them's name was Stasio. Um, he admits during the scene that he actually admired Dio at the time, and actually wanted to seek um, his internal youth, because he realized that the power of Ripple has its limits, and he's not going to be living forever. So, in a way, he kind of inherited Dio's will. Um, I guess kind of the same way now Joseph is going to have to inherit his will, or uh, Joseph's will, because of... Um, jo I'm getting the names confused. I swear, it's not going to be the first time this happens. Anyway, wills are inherited um, into a new cast. Um, so, he goes ahead and takes his vampire power uh, and just ki kills everyone there and. uh kill Speedwagon in the process um it's so scattered bro I love it it's just going from one thing to the next so then we cut back to the family dining in and that's when we get informed by a mobster about Speedwagon's death to the cast um and 
it really um, unsettles Elena uh, and Joseph too. He gets really mad that um, someone brought this on her all of a sudden without any warning. Um, so then it cuts again uh, to, I think, later in the day. Uh, we see Smokey and Joseph um, out to eat. And um, Joseph's just ha having a little bit of a smoke because, you know, 1930s, we don't care about lung cancer. So they're out eating and they're having a perfect time. And then Stasio just shows up out of nowhere and is glaring Joseph through the window. And, uh, of course, Jojo the second, I'm going to call him that, uh, he ends up walking out and confronting him. And this dude has the balls to pull out a Tommy gun and unleash a full clip into him. And he just gets up. This is like what? I think like 1930s, I want to say they're near they're near you New York. So, uh this is like gangster, like the mobster type stuff, dude. Um and that's just where it ends. He Joseph challenges uh Stasio um and I guess the cycle continues. Uh, with the the feud and man this show it's on something I'm excited um, for part two and I'm excited to see where it goes um, so I guess now that we kind of reviewed the show I'm gonna go ahead and I want to explain a little bit um, why I'm splitting this video up in two parts so uh, let's go ahead and let's simmer it down a little bit I kind of I kind of want to get serious here um, these uh these past few days uh, I've just been struggling with uh, real bad depression. Um, I've been having a hard time. Just I've been bottling up a lot of stuff, and I feel like I've been alone. Um, and I'm just not leaning on anyone when I need that support. And um, eventually, it just came to all crumbling down. And I've just um, been having a hard time. I've been cutting um, just things I normally find uh, that make me happy just weren't making me happy anymore. Um, and it, it was this was during when I was trying to finish up uh, part one and I barely was able to finish part one so I wanted to take a I wanted to finish part one and I wanted to take a break a little bit because um, you know like it's not a joke like um, a few years ago I never really considered myself a like a depressed or suicidal type person but um, you know life happens uh, a lot of drama can come out of nowhere, a lot of relationship breakups, um, and things happen. Um, and now I have to deal with uh, depression, and it, it, it hurts a lot of the time. It really sucks the fun out of things that you once did. So um, I, hope I hope soon we can uh, get back to part two and finish up Phantom Blood. Uh, I want to be able to talk about the whole rest of the series um, instead of just having to split it up, so, um, I hope you guys, um, understand, and I'm sorry to make it, uh, all, all a little bit, uh, um, down at the end, um, I just wanted to be real with y'all, um, it's something I like doing when I make videos, um, I don't like, I don't like being fake, I like to actually, you know, be myself and be how I am, so I don't like putting on a persona, um, so, anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and I hope you guys be sure to like or dislike. Um, I don't care which one you do. Uh, either way, it, it supports me and helps me um, become a better content creator. Um, so, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Till next time, stay sex. I'm too hyper.